let's talk about toxoplasma gondii. Right. So this belongs to phylum Apicomplexa and class Sporozoa. In this class, you also find Plasmodium species like Plasmodium ovale, Vivax, Fauciparum, and Malaria. You can click the link on the top right corner and watch our Plasmodium video. Right. Let's continue with the Toxoplasma. Right. Toxoplasma causes a disease called Toxoplasmosis in general. But there are three main conditions I will talk about. First, in immunocompetent individuals. Right. So. If this parasite uh, attack the immunocompetent or someone who is healthy, right, this patient will have a mono-like symptoms, right, is like infectious mononucleosis caused by EBV, right. But you, if you test uh, using like this heterophile antibody test, it will be negative in a mono, the actual mono by um, EBV Epstein Barr virus, it will be heterophile antibody test positive right? but in toxoplasma it will be negative but this patient will have similar symptoms mono like symptoms the next condition uh, will be in immunocompromised individuals like in a reactivation of AIDS right so these patients who have brain abscesses usually seen as multiple ring enhancing lesions on MRI, as you can see, these rings. Another deadly condition is called congenital toxoplasmosis. This is when a pregnant woman uh, get toxoplasma and pass it uh, to the child. This is a vertical transmission. Remember, toxoplasma is one of the torch infections. Is the first one on the pneumonic torch, right? So, uh, the the child or the infant who have uh, a, um, is a triad of symptoms is chorioretinitis, hydrocephalus, and intracranial calcification, right? So, let's uh, start with the uh, chorioretinitis, and let me just zoom. Right, that is chorioretinitis caused by toxoplasma gondii. Next will be hydrocephalus, right? So this is cerebrospinal fluid, which is not uh, flowing properly. It's like a blockage, right? So if you zoom here, you can see the enlargement of ventricles, right? You can see this head of this um, child. It's because of the cerebrospinal fluid. And the specific sign is called sunset eyes for hydrocephalus cool. next will be intracranial calcifications as you can see there those calcifications right transmission right toxoplasma is transmitted uh firstly you know you get this by uh, eating meat with cysts right this is the most common pathway and the all cysts of this parasite are found in the feces of cats, right? So, uh, pregnant women should not play with cats because this has the ability to uh, cross the placenta when infecting a pregnant mother and causing uh, congenital toxoplasmosis, right? So, diagnosis, how do you diagnose toxoplasma, right? So, you can do serology biops and you can see tachyzoids Right, so these are actually uh, tachyzoids here. Right, uh, in if you are suspecting that uh, this mother has been in contact uh, with a cat with Toxoplasma gondii, you can uh, do a procedure known as amniocentesis. You take the amniotic fluid, and this will be guided by ultrasound, of course. And you test this amniotic fluid by polymerase chain reaction. In this case, you can actually detect the DNA of Toxoplasma gondii. Treatment. How do you treat Toxoplasmosis? You use the combination of drugs, sulfadiazine and perimethamine. perimethamine. For prophylaxis, you do prophylaxis with 
the trimethoprim sulfur methoxazole and you do this when the CD4 count is less than 100 cubic millimeters. That's when you give this a prophylaxis. This is just a basic high yield. So I will make a detailed comprehensive lecture on toxoplasmosis. That's all for now.